YouTube, Natalie here and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. If we don't know each other yet, I'm an urban homesteader and worm farmer here in San Diego, California, and I've got a little baby named Ruby. This week we're hitting the reset button on the garden and I wanna show you how I can use all of my garden materials to make 600 pounds of compost right here in just two feet by three feet of space. So stay tuned, I'll show you how we hit the reset button on our garden and on our worm farm. Before we do, this is the perfect opportunity to invite you guys into our VIP mailing list. It's where you guys get encouragement on a weekly basis sent straight to your inbox and where you're the first to know about anything cool that we're doing here at Hey It's a Good Life. So definitely check that out, I'll leave a link down below. Without further ado, let's hop in to making 600 pounds of compost on this urban homestead. All right, here's a little raw and real worm farm and garden behind the scenes for you. It's not always tidy, it's not always perfect, and that's just how it goes. But it is great for one thing, and the truth is all of these greens that we're about to clean out are fantastic material for resetting our worm farm. But before I rip anything out, I thought we could go for a little tour. The process of turning my garden scraps into 600 pounds of compost starts with a good garden cleanup. First, I take out anything dead, diseased, and dry. Anything diseased gets thrown in this burn pile, and this old mulch is going to serve as the browns for our future compost. If you guys haven't heard of this tool, it's called a hula hoe, and it is one of my new favorite tools in the garden because it makes weeding and ripping things out by the root so easy. And as much as I loved these peas, it was time for them to go. Yeah, it's a lonely calling. Of course, while I'm cleaning anything out, if I do see seeds worth saving, I do try and hold on to them. Okay, so here's a weird Natalie trick. I actually use my sieve, which is what I use to separate worms from worm castings, and I use it to separate soil from mulch, because after using the hula hoe through the mulch to get all the weeds out, it's a bit of a mess, and so rather than just leaving it that way, I find that it's better to redistribute the soil using the sieve, and then save the leaves and compost them using our worms. And I just kind of repeat that process on each bed. Remove any weeds and disease, set those in the burn pile, collect any healthy greens, get those ready for the compost pile, and also collect any browns and collect those for the compost pile.
After I've got all my piles set up for my composting process, I definitely try and take advantage of that freshly kind of churned earth and I start planting. And of course, it's wonderful to have my little garden helper with me. Something I really noticed this year while I was planting is just how different my soil is thanks to vermicomposting with our worm farm. My soil moves water through it so well. This soil was super hydrophobic when we first moved here and now it's just so nice and lovely. And I honestly chalked that up 100% to our worm farming process. To kind of curb my ADD and help me visualize what the garden should look like, I usually try and set out all my plants where they need to go. And this year I'm simplifying everything so much. I am doing what they say you're supposed to do, which is just focus on growing a few things really well. And so this year, one of the things that I'm focusing on growing really well is tomatoes. And I believe this tomato that I'm planting here is actually our yellow pear tomato, which some of you may know is actually a tomato that Tommy's great grandfather had a hand in developing and so it's something I plant every year in their honor as kind of an homage to our family's history in seed farming. The way I like to plant tomatoes is as deep as possible removing all of those lower stems and then I like to form a little well especially here in my dry climate I kind of try to form wells around my plants so that it's easy for them to drink up water. dawned on me that somehow I've already lost half the tags for my new plant stars. Now, as much as I wanted to deny it because I don't think it's particularly beautiful, truly one of the best mulches for my hot and dry climate is a nice loose leaf cover of basically any local foliage. My mom was kind enough to collect leaves for me last time she was here, so she made a big pile and I just used my big worm sieve to collect the leaves from different piles she made and add them to the garden. All right, and now for the part that you have all been waiting for. How exactly are we going to turn all of this into 600 pounds of compost? And let me tell you, my friends, it is through the power of worms. <laughs> Now, over the years, I've experimented with different ways of layering my worm farm. I teach you guys in my quick start guide how to layer a certain way that works. This is another, maybe more simpler way that also works. So it starts with a layer of browns. In this case, I'm using a paper bag. Then I added compost. And now you can hear, see me here adding worms. And then after that, I'll go ahead and add grit for their gizzards to help them digest their food, which in this case for right now is just going to be the greens from my garden. And then after I add the greens from the garden, it's time to add lots and lots of browns. Browns are basically the solution to so many worm farming problems. Browns help regulate moisture control and keep so many unwanted pests at bay. In this case, I'm using leaves again that I've just found around my property. And just like that, our worm farm is set up. In two to three months, we'll have 600 pounds of black gold. Make sure you're subscribed to see the process of this worm farm as it continues to grow and evolve. And as I share with you guys what it's like to be a worm farmer out here in San Diego, California. Thanks for being here, you guys. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs>